Hey you guys, I'm sorry the lighting is really, really bad right now. I'm actually not, obviously, I'm not at my house in Atlanta right now. I'm actually at my parents' house and you can see behind me, that's my sister and me. It's a big thing to do down here in the South. Like when I was a kid, it's like get your kids portrait. So that's my sister and me up there. Anyway, so um, I'm trying to find the humor in this because I know, you know, we all know that demons don't understand humor. Like only God's people can laugh. Demons just like don't know how to laugh. Like I'm serious. If you ever have a demonic attack, like if you ever see a demon in your room or something, just laugh at it. It will totally disarm it. But um, first of all, thank you guys so, so much for all your love and your support over these last few days since I made the video with Taylor and with Stephanie regarding the situation. Um, again, spiritual warfare is real. And um, I have been under attack of spiritual warfare my whole life. Like this is What's recently happened to me is probably the most gnarly of everything that's ever happened to me because it's so shocking. It's so just like, what the fuck, you know? Um, but what's happening right now, as we mentioned with Taylor and Stephanie, is that um, the veil is thinning. And so things are like merging from the spiritual world to the physical world. And we know that we are spiritual beings here having like a human experience. So this stuff is really real it's really, really real. And as far as like the black magic goes, I've laughed about it on my show before. I mean, I'm, I'm from the deep South. I mean, who hasn't seen Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil or read the book Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil? Like that's, that's what happens down here in the deep South where we understand things like black magic, like that shit's real, you know? Um, but what happened now, it, recently was just so wild and it was happening to me for a while before I realized what was going on. And hopefully one day I can tell you guys like the full story of everything that happened. But again, right now, this is a very serious situation, even though I'm trying to find the humor in it, it is a very serious situation because there are innocent people involved still who are very much spell casted and, um, as a human being and as a friend, I love these people a lot and I know that what's happening to them right now is very serious. And so we have to just kind of be careful about um, not angering the demon too much. I don't care if the demon's pissed at me. It can be pissed at me because I'm pissed at it. Um, but I wanna make sure that my friends are safe. And I, 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 I have a feeling that they're gonna be waking up pretty soon because I don't think the power that this entity is holding is gonna last forever. It, it takes a lot to hold that kind of a power, that spell. And especially since I figured out what it was doing and I figured out that it was using my natal chart to cast spells, basically trying to be me in order to manipulate. Um, I know why it was trying to do that. I, I, throughout this whole experience, I have learned more about my natal chart and I have learned some pretty significant things about what's encoded in that chart. And it's, it's not just about me because our natal charts, you know, we have all these souls that we're linked to other people that we like intertwine with, you know? And so if you are a high ranking black witch or a demon, I don't even think this, this entity, we kept getting that this entity is not even human. Um, they know how to do that. And especially if this entity isn't human, it's, it's going to have to, it's going to have no choice but to try to possess another person's energetic field in order to have any type of essence, right? Because if it's a demon, it, it doesn't have a human essence anyway. It can't create one. And so what's happening with this, this situation is that anytime you're using somebody else's essence, their soul, anything like card reading, uh, astrology, it's the, the, those tools of divination are picking up me. It's picking up my energy, not the demons, not the demons. And actually it's funny because other readers have read this demon knowing that it's using my natal chart and those cards are scary. When you actually see this, the, the truth of who this entity really is, it's pretty, pretty wild. But anyway, so I'm up here at my parents' house and um, I have an engagement party to go to tonight. It's my cousin's engagement party and uh, I'm... My sister and I grew up with my mom's sister's kids, so there were like eight of us. 
uh, we kind of grew up like brothers and sisters. And so I'm really excited about seeing my cousin. I love his fiance. She's super, super cool. She's one of us. Do you know what I mean? She's one of us. Um, in the past, we've been in like the corner at Christmas, like talking about everything. So I'm super excited that they're actually going to get married. And, um, oh, I had ordered a black dress, uh, maybe like a month ago, six weeks ago, just to wear this party. And I have maintained my same size for all of my 20s and all of my 30s. So normally, under normal circumstances, when someone's not trying to steal my identity, I normally am good with just ordering clothes online and it's fine. I go and do my thing. It's all good. Well, when someone actually steals your identity, your spiritual encoded natal chart, energetic identity, there are um, things that happen to you. And as you guys know, a lot of you know, I stopped being able to eat. I mean, this was going on long before I figured it out. And it wasn't me that figured it out. I actually got tipped off um, by actually a couple of people. And then I had it verified. It's a long story. One day I'll tell you guys all the, the juicy details of how this all was revealed, how the, uh, the truth came out. But I, this weird thing was happening to me for a couple of weeks. And, and I'm not by nature a big eater. I'm just, I'm vata. Like my dosha is vata. So if you're familiar with like the doshas of Ayurveda, like that's typical of vatas. We're not really big eaters anyway. We're kind of wavy people. But um, it, it was weird because I would go to like eat. My stomach would be growling. I'd be really hungry. I'd go to eat and I literally would pick food up and my jaw would lock. Like my jaw would start to lock. And I couldn't, it was so strange. Sometimes I'd get like a couple of bites in, but that was it. And I started just massively dropping weight. And I'm not, I was not at the position anyway to lose weight. Um, and I, and I was getting concerned. Like I, I, I was, and I was mentioning things to people like my friends on shows. I was like, I don't know what's happening. Like I can't eat anything. Like this is so weird. I would lay in my bed at night. And my, my ribs touching the bed would just sting because there was like nothing between my ribs and the mattress. And, um, and it wasn't until that this was all revealed, which what is done in the dark will be brought to the light. It will always be brought to the light, um, that I was able to then be proactive. And I went to one of my friends who's like a really, really good light worker. I'm not going to go into detail of who she is or what she is because she's very private. Um, and there was a lot that we, uh, couldn't do because uh, like binding because what was happening is like the soul intertwinement was so intertwined again i am aware i 100 percent know why my needle chart was being used because it's not just about me it's not just about something in my chart but it's about something in somebody else's chart too that's triggered through my chart i hope that makes sense for now again I'm hoping one day, once everything is finished and done with, we can all sit down and just talk about it openly for you guys because it is it is interesting and it is really gnarly. But there was a lot that we couldn't do because um, we're we're of the light, and when you're of the light, you have to have free will. And if somebody else's soul essence is also involved, you can't do things without their permission. But the person whose other soul essence is involved is heavily under the spell right now, so there would be no permission granted. And as I said with Taylor, I got I actually got assistance from the Palladians, and I have been blown away by all I've learned and um. Like off rollers are real guys. They're, they're real and they love us. And um, I had a tracker in the back of my neck. It started off, I said on the video, I had a tracker on my right foot uh, a couple of weeks before this all came out. Um, it was causing my hip, my knee to go out. I was in a lot of pain. And funnily enough, the person who removed the tracker is actually one of the people involved that's under the spell right now. So that's very interesting. And one day when uh, everything is out and they understand what's happening, I really can't wait to like sit down and talk to the other people because it's once you see it, you can't unsee it. But anyway, she then put, or this thing, this Baphomet then put a tracker on my neck. And that was what was really locking my jaw. But was what was also locking my jaw is that because she was pulling my essence of my soul and using it and projecting it as hers, it was causing my body to actually start to shut down. Wild. Like this is like American horror story, wild stuff. Um, but because the tracker was removed, I've now been able to start eating again. 
But back to the engagement party. So I ordered this black dress. I posted a picture of it. I ordered it online thinking about ah, perfect little black dress for an engagement party before Christmas. It's fine. It's fine. I pack a little overnight bag. I'm not going to be here. I'm just going to spend the night here tonight after the party and then I'm going back to Atlanta. I've got some work to do tomorrow to, to prepare for Monday's show with Aquarius Rising Africa. And I get here and I took a shower and I put the dress on. Y'all, y'all, I kid you not. It was a moo-moo on me. Like it was embarrassing. I put the dress on and it was hanging off of me. And so my mom comes in and my mama I was just going to kind of like roll with it. Like, it's fine. It's fine. It, it, I don't care if it's hanging off of me, whatever. I'm going to have fun anyway. It's no big deal. It's my family. It's people I've known my whole life. No one cares. Whatever. Maybe put a little belt on. Well, my mom was like, you cannot wear that. You know, growing up down here in the deep south, we were taught that pride bears no pain and beauty is pain. And so my mother was like, absolutely not. You can't wear that. And so my mother just started freaking out. And she was like, oh, my God we need to go shopping. We have to get you something to wear because I don't have anything here to wear. And, um, so I'm, I almost like I was in, in my mother's bedroom, like in her closet with her trying to find something. And I'm almost in tears at this point. And I'm just like, I'm just not going to go. I can't go. You know, my mom knows about what happened. Like she, she understands what happened to me. I mean, my mother was born in Charleston, South Carolina. Like she knows what's going on. Um, and finally I found this top, you guys, I was like, I love it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. Like, I love it. It's like a, I don't know. I hope it doesn't make me look like an old lady, but I really love this top and I've got my, my leggings on. So I think it's all good. But I realized, you know, if we're under this spiritual battle, if we, if we're going through this and a lot of us are being attacked, if you go through it, I go through, just make sure you double check that the clothes you order for particular parties actually fit you before you go to the party if that makes sense. Don't do, don't do what I did because it will be a disaster. And meanwhile, you know, if you guys ever saw the movie, the devil wears Prada, where she's like, I'm just one stomach virus away from my goal weight. Yeah. Well, I was basically just a uh, one black witch entity attack from, from being below a goal weight. So now I get to go to this party and stand by the food table all night and uh, eat. Um, I've already had a milkshake today and two cookies today. I've got a big old glass of full milk back here. Um, I'm gonna be third wheeling it with my sister and my brother-in-law. So um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun. I'll get to like really enjoy the food tonight. And hopefully the more I can eat and the more I can restabilize myself, it will weaken this entity that's taking on a human form right now and it will weaken her spell casting. Because here's the thing, guys. She's not gonna stop using my natal chart. That's not gonna stop. She didn't have my consent before she started using my natal chart and she's not gonna, she, me telling her to stop isn't gonna stop her, right? These these uh, people that are, are entities that are affiliated with um, the dark cult, and she is, I've gotten some more information, she is affiliated whether she's human or not, she is affiliated with this, this dark cult. Um, they're not going to care. You know, they're still going to keep trying to basically hijack, uh, my soul essence, um, to continue doing what she needs to do to obliterate whatever she's trying to obliterate. Here's the thing. She's playing on human emotions. So within our soul charts, within our natal charts, and with just being a human being in general, when you have, we talked a lot with Taylor and Stephanie about the heart, the heart, uh, chakra, you know, that that's, that there's, there's love there. And so when these entities, they, they have no feelings for anything, but, but themselves, like they don't care. She doesn't care about the people she's manipulating. She doesn't love them. She doesn't want to be with them. She's feeding off of them. Okay. She's feeding off of them. And so in order to entrap and then feed off of someone, there's going to be manipulation there. Okay. And the reason why it's working at this point it's working is because she tapped into something in my natal chart that is connected to the other people, right? Because we all love each other. We all have, we know, we all have passed together. We all have been through this together. We we're here together. You know, we're all walking each other home. And so she's tapping into that. But I will say on top of that, and if one of the people that's ensnared in this spell is watches this video, I want you to understand she targeted you. And she targeted me for a reason. 
I understand what that reason is now. I know more about my natal chart than I ever thought I would learn. And there's a reason why she's using my natal chart to target you as well. You are more valuable to this great awakening than you realize. There's a history there that is playing out now in this timeline. And the devil will stop at nothing to try to hijack what is to come. But as our favorite military back channel says, nothing can stop what's coming. I know that this entity is losing her power. She's losing her strength. And again, as I said, it's going to get harder for her to hold on to that, that manipulation. And so all you guys need to do, you guys are asking me for a name. I'm not going to give a name. Just trust your gut. That's what we've learned in this great awakening, right? Trust your gut. That's God talking to you. Trust your gut. A lot of you guys already know who I'm talking about because you got the same visceral nauseous reaction when you, which is what you, which is typical of seeing a demon that nauseated, like when a hurl feeling that's very typical of seeing an actual demon and not just a bad person. You know, usually when it's a bad person, you're just annoyed, but the actual, like I have to go throw up, that's a demonic entity. Okay. So so good job. Your, your gut was right. Okay. Now I'm going to say too, this spell casting that she's been doing, she's been doing for a very long time. It's been doing, like I said, I don't even think it's a she, um, long before I even knew the other people involved and long before they even knew who I was, she was already working this. Okay. Okay. Just like God knows who all of us are. So does the devil. All right. Um, a lot of stuff is going to be happening this month that's going to be crazy. Um, a lot of us are going to start to remember things. Uh, we do have like a cloaking, a lot of us. Most of us have like a cloaking where we can't fully remember things, but it's going to start to become like the forefront of our thoughts. So just be prepared for that. I don't think we're going to remember everything, but we're going to remember some things. And so just be prepared for that. And that's going to inform you as someone that's here at this time for a reason on how to proceed forward in this, this battle, because this is the final battle guys this is it. This is what we've been waiting for. And we've just got to get through this, this last little hurdle before, um, before we're good, before we're in a place where this type of evil can't even exist. And so what I want all you guys to do to, if you want to help the situation is just send love, just send love out to everyone all the people who have platforms, all your friends, all of the white hats just send so much love out there. And hopefully that will start to weaken any type of spell casting. Cause I know what's happening in my situation is happening in other situations as well. All right. So we want to weaken all of it. Now, tonight is the last full moon of this year. Now, unfortunately, I had a little cry about this last night. This entity, from what we understand, allegedly is also very much involved in the dark cult. As I said, we know what happens on full moons, especially ritualized dates. And so um, just be praying, thinking happy thoughts, whatever it is that you that you do um, to create or to source. Uh, know that the military is on its way. I do believe that they are aware of everything and um, we're going to be all good. So anyway, all right, guys. So I am about to head out. My sister and brother-in-law are going to get here soon. Uh, my mother and my stepfather are already at the venue uh, setting up because they're hosting with my other aunts. Very still magnolias. Maybe I'll take some pictures and post it for you guys. But um, I love you all very, very, very much. Uh, we're good, you know. It's our earth. We're taking it back. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. And one last thing I forgot to mention. I know you guys have heard me say this a couple of times, like on my own show, especially on other shows that like right when we had to lock down, I had this like nagging sensation that I needed to get really strong. I was already doing a really intense yoga practice, but I started incorporating like bar and strength training as well. And I'd been doing that for a couple of years. And I just assumed that it was to prepare my body for this final flip into third density, the earth third density to fourth density. 
that wasn't why, guys. That wasn't why I had to do strength training. That whole thing about me having to strength train for a couple of years was for this reason. I needed that strength in order to get through this battle with this fucking Baphomet. So, um, yeah, trust your gut. Do what your gut tells you to do because I really think if I had not done all that work on my physical body, this would have turned out a lot differently than it has. So, anyway. All right, guys. I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye.